Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are in New York City as part of the Big Data NYC in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. We are 100 yards from the Javits Center, where it's the center of the universe on the Big Data conversation, where this big story is beyond Hadoop, Hadoop next. This no longer Hadoop. Hadoop world has been sunsetted out of the vocabulary. It's now Big Data, it's called Strata plus Hadoop. We're going to start to see Hadoop world phase away. I put the question out there, Dave, should it be called Spark World? <laughs> or Big Data World? Anyway, we got all the action covered. I'm John Furrier, my host, co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Cube alum, Jim McCube from VP Mark and Cisco. Great to see you again. Good to have, good to be here, guys. So great to have you on. You're like a coach that comes in from the, uh, from the, the you know, just won the Super Bowl being an guest analyst with us. So I want to pick your brain first as like an industry analyst type. Okay. The Hadoop word is kind of becoming regulated into just storage layer. And we're hearing that yeah. theme where even Cloudera announced um, that, you know, hey, we've got this new fabric, access, you know, customers want to do whatever they want to do for access, is kind of here. But then the conversation is shifting to the analytics piece. Yeah. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, the reason why it's shifting to the analytics piece is we do all this to deliver business outcomes. And data management, Hadoop is extremely important, and it was so difficult for years that that was the focus. But now, people need to actually get insights from that data to pay for those deployments, or you're not going to be able to do it. And it, it's interesting because even in our world, a lot of the revenue is going to come from the data management and the Hadoop components of it. Just a few nodes of analytics actually deliver so much insight that it, and so valuable that yeah. Really, a lot of our analytics partners' business is taking off. And Cisco, obviously, your number, your market share at UCS. Congratulations, you guys got some good performance um, uh, and doing well. And but I want to get your take on as someone who's a who's an incumbent in the market, certainly on the networking side, moving up the stack to the edge of the network with Internet of Things is going on huge for you. Yes. But in the old Hadoop world, when the ecosystem started six, seven years ago, it, it was the picks and shuffles game. Yeah. but not all picks and shovels are working. So I got to ask you, you're in that business, ultimately under the hood, there's some stuff going on. What's your take on that? You're doing well performance-wise, so customers are resonating with your solution. Which picks and shovels are working? What's not working? Well, I mean, so I think what you're seeing is people are looking at it for different scenarios. I mean, I, I used to tell all the Hadoop vendors, especially when it was so difficult and early on, people would vendor hop. Like, oh, it didn't work with one, I'm going to go to the other, go to the other. But I think you're starting to see so many deployments that are working now, and that it's becoming reliable. We've all made the switch. Everyone said, you know, it was MapReduce, now it's Spark, right? Yeah. Spark is the new thing coming, and it's actually, I'm a big fan. I've been a big fan of the Databricks guys for a while and what they're doing. So I think that will take off, and that will continue to change. Companies like Platform have embraced Spark, and it's starting to pay off for them. We're seeing it in our customers when they go in, um, because it's simplifying the process. Nobody really wants to go through oh my God, I got to do ETL, then I got to bring in integration, then I got to go the whole component. So that's why Spark's paying off. But I think there are other vendors who are doing it as well. So I think people are starting to get the data integration, data prep. Um, you're getting a lot of insight coming from the Trifactas, the Skytrees, the Puxadas, all these guys are doing a really good job of saying it's not just about managing yeah. the data, you got to clean it up and get better preparation out of it. And then the analytics guys come in and are getting a lot of value too. So. I wonder if we could come back to, John sort of threw out IOT there. It yep. seems like a lot of the internet of, of things, internet of everything you guys call it, is going to happen in the cloud. The data's going to live in the yep. cloud in mega data centers. I yep. wonder if you could give us your take on that, um, particularly as it relates to the cloud and mega data centers and where Cisco plays. I mean, the way we look at it is, first off, 40% of the world's data is being created at the edge. It is going to be, you know, internet of things. You know, internet of everything is just adding the people process mm -hmm. to that but the internet of things is going to create an incredible amount of data, incredible amount of insight. That's where the machine learning comes in. Now the mega data centers, I mean, I think it varies based on what people are trying to accomplish, yeah. right? So honestly, I think it's not going to be mega data centers when it comes to IOT. It's going to be small fog computing that actually is going to let you Let's actually Let's talk about mega data centers. That came up multiple times now in the past six months on theCUBE, which is the death of the data center, the mega data center is dead. That's what the quote headlines on the blogs are. That's actually not the case. The mega no. data centers are getting beefier. If anything, there's more of a distributed data center model going. Do you see that trend? I mean, debunk that myth like, okay, the mega data center's not going away. They, you obviously would agree with that. You're in the it, data centers. At the end of the day, it's the applications that are mattering really still. And, and the data is great and it's really important, but it's the importance of the application. So when you have 
high application utilization, you have a big data center to support that. When you don't know what that application utilization would be, you put it in the cloud. That's what customers do. And, but once it starts getting enough concentration, enough action, and that application, you're going to put it somewhere where it has the cost benefits. So it's swinging because applications are coming and going where you're getting, trying out new applications, new ways of doing it, internet of things. Yeah, it spins up a whole new way of writing applications. They, their lifetime is less. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys nailed it. I got to give, I mean, again, I'll let you get, do, some, do some props on the numbers or your performance. Cisco had unified computing, not a naysayers early on, so yeah. we're kind of throwing you under the bus. Ah, there's no way adjacent markets, the chamber's vision of, and going to the server, that's not your core competency. All that has been kicked around and kind of like proven wrong, so that's cool. But the word unifying is coming up. Unified cloud is VMware. Yeah. You got unification message being taught here. You have that platform, you've done it, been successful. Yeah. Now you're in this big data world where there's a lot of partners you work with. So integration's critical. So what is the key success to make integration work and to truly be unified yeah. in big data? In big data. We have, I mean, a lot of our solutions, even, in, even at Cisco Live, our show, where we did vertical, we did big data and analytics solutions inside each of our verticals. Healthcare, financial services, security, transportation. And each of those solutions include at least two of our partners. We did healthcare with Cloudera and Tableau. We did security with MapR and Platfora. We did transportation with Splunk. I think maybe that was just Splunk. But each of these components are a different partner coming in because of their different expertise. And I actually think there is a little bit, you know, that integration becomes important. Again, data management without analytics is data management. Analytics without something to you know, take it from is not going to get you there either. <laughs> so what we're seeing is these, yeah, these partners true. are working so much better together to, to drive the solution and it's just part of what is being expected by customers. I was at a, a partner event yesterday and it was a lot of our joint customers there. So I went up for the, you know, the reception afterwards and talked to them, some big financial services companies, but also just about every industry you could think of was here and it was part of that, that partnership. So is Cisco providing sort of the leadership for, to get those guys to work together? Because they don't sort of just organically start working you know, together, do so they? So the or? honest thing is, we've actually been proactive. Uh -huh. We've been really proactive, much more than you would think from an infrastructure provider, bringing together the big data and analytics community and, and talking about it. It's like, going to be our crowd chat later. A bunch of cool people coming together to talk about this stuff. But I think that has brought it together, but it's really customers are demanding it. It is, give me the infrastructure that's reliable, give me the data management that's going to work, and then give me whatever I need to bring in the multiple data, so data integration, and then I need the analytics, I need the business outcomes. And we're obsessed with business outcomes because our customers are obsessed with business outcomes. Now you're speaking tomorrow, the keynote, and you know, get some kind of cool examples. Why don't you tee that up for us a little bit? Yeah, so, like. so keynote of five minutes, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's the way it works here. But, speed, speed uh -huh. keynote. Uh -huh. But yeah, so, you know, we're a little bit, we were talking about the edge, what's going on, and I'm kind of obsessed with the data that's being created at the edge, and so I'm going to be giving, talking about two examples. Um, our friends at Splunk invited me up to a race day uh, at Sonoma, so I had a Porsche Cayman, took it up there for the day, and went around the track, and we put these little carvoyant dongles into the dashboard, and was taking all the diagnostics coming out of it, and passing it up through their cloud to the Splunk system, and then in real time, you could see our maximum speed and going from there. So I'll be showing a, a geospace map with you know, everything laying that out and talking about how that can work. And, and you were driving? I was driving, man. So does give you a report card? Like, yeah. you, know, you get the yeah. right stuff? I will say <laughs> that uh, Godfrey and the rest of the Splunkers drive much better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give them that. They've been through a couple times. Did you get a chance <laughs> yeah. to go back through and try that? Uh, I had a point Godfrey by with his uh, Ferrari <laughs> twice, by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's, he's actually a really good driver. Um, and then the other one is talking about is a, a partner of ours, Dimension Data, long-term partner, one of our oldest you know, channel partners and, and solutions partners at Cisco, uh, is actually putting GPS on each of the 198 riders of the Tour de France and actually giving so much better feedback. I mean, so it's really removing the you know, traditional, I got a motorbike and I'm actually taking video and now that's where we know that poor guy is. So we'll be talking about that as well. So talk about the Spark, non-Spark solutions. There's been some talk out there, you mentioned Plat4. They also started without Spark, so yes. they're doing actually in memory, but now they're doing Spark. Is there, a, can you have a balance between a Spark and non-Spark solution? In your mind. I'm glad I mean, so, I think today you can. Um, obviously, Spark will continue to grow importance, but there's other solutions coming. I mean, so, they, the, the Apache Spark team, the, the Databricks team, they need to keep innovating. 
or, or they're going to be challenged by something else. Nothing is here forever unless it keeps innovating. I mean, so. there's purpose-built stuff that's working. Engineered yeah. software can be use case. For Every them. one of them says we support map reduce for big batch and then and we spark as well. What's your biggest takeaway over the past five years looking at the ecosystem? What's changed the most in wow. your mind? In big data analytics? Big data analytics. Everything. We're here, Strata, Hadoop, the word Hadoop is still in there. Yeah. Strata is O'Reilly, they're not really a vendor, they're just an yeah. event company. Um, but Hadoop is an ecosystem. That's Cloudera, yeah. leader, and they're number one app on all clusters with Cloudera Manager. Yeah. You got Hortonworks, they went public. Yeah. I mean, those are two big firms hoping to be the next Microsoft. Not, not looking good, I mean, or is it? And by the way, the, the MapR guys are doing pretty well as well. Yeah, I mean, so, but yeah. they're all doing well, but I think there's going to be more change, and I think it's going to be more to the analytics. So we'll see how where, you know, Mike Olson and team and the rest of the, the Cloud Era guys go, but they, they, they are strong. I mean, they're doing really great stuff out there. I just think customers are saying, it's time to step it up. I'm not just here to manage my data. We've got tons of great examples um, with them. Yeah. It, and it's exciting because you, we are changing people's lives, we are changing the world. Um, Atlanta Healthcare with Cloudera, um, collect, collecting all the diagnostics off the neonatal for vital signs, and then actually by studying those, we were able to help them understand that they need to change their care practices. So things like that, when, you, when you're part of those kind of solutions, you feel, you know, hey, this is actually really compelling and you are doing great stuff. Well, somebody was saying on the cube recently that the they, it, this whole ecosystem reminds them of the old Unix wars, you know, days of the Unix wars. But there's a lot of things that are different. Being, a, I mean, being an old sun guy, I don't know. See, well, I don't well, see any command line well, gray so, hair guys. Yeah. So I wanted to <laughs> ask you. So you know, what are the differences? What are the similarities? I mean, yes, there are some similarities, but a lot of companies, you know, particularly you guys, I, IBM certainly talking about business outcomes much yes. more so. And the customers, I don't think are going to let the industry take. 10 years to try to figure it out and then realize, oh, well, we just need Linux. I mean, <laughs> what right. do you see as the similarities and the differences? Uh, well, I think, well, the main difference is that it, it's just a whole new world um, of how we're looking at applications and data. I mean, that back in that day was big applications, monolithic, you know, we ran it. On, on our machines, like, you know, our big sun machines big back box, then. And shove all the data box, into that box. And that, it was box centric. Yeah. And today, it's, I think you alluded to it, it's distributed. Right, applications are distributed across from the edge data center, your you know out to the cloud, and you know let's take a simple example of the parking app, a parking app that allows you to find an app, find a parking spot, and then pay for it. It starts by collecting the data of available parking in the city, right? So you're you're collecting all the information. That data is then being communicated to the digital signs around the parking garage and around the city, and it needs to be communicated back to the data center so that it can be communicated to the app, right? All that happens before the, the user even gets involved. But also what's going on, is it's doing real-time pricing in the back. They basically have the equivalent of surge pricing capabilities of making that for parking to try to encourage people to park in different locations. So you have data being collected at the edge, being communicated to digital signs, et cetera. Then it's being also communicated to the data center. But when I go to purchase that, I got a whole transaction processing engine, all these different components, and I may be doing sort of like predictive components in a Hadoop area, it could be on a cloud scale basis. All that is one simple app that everyone thinks is like brain dead, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes. So let's get back to this integration thing again, because you mentioned the customer thing, and I want to get this Hadoop Next concept. Um, at Hadoop Summit, that came up a lot, which is it's beyond Hadoop. You guys mm -hmm. were really talking about that last time with your team, about it's just bigger than Hadoop. What specifically are you seeing? Obviously Spark is one great example you have. Streaming, real time, I mean Cisco, you talk about Internet of yeah. Things, there's you know, trickling it down of data, there's real time data. Well the funny thing is there's a lot of data that will never make it into a database. You don't need, if I want to know how many customers are coming into my store between 11 and one, I don't need to put that into a database to, to collect all that information. I can do an average and do the analytics at the edge. Right, so if I want to know what's going on with a drill bit and whether I'm actually going to shut it down or keep it going, I'm not going to bring it, have time to bring it back into a, and put it into a Hadoop database. Make the call. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, it, it cut it off now. But if I'm actually doing seismic analysis across, yeah, you definitely want to put that in there as well. So there's so much that's going on in data that you're just going to make decisions on the data before you have a chance to store it. Think about how mind blowing that concept is. Some data will never actually make it into a database. Yeah. That, you could, that was never in the case before. But it's cool, that's, that's yeah. what the edge is about. You're going to have to make decisions. 
And the thing is, uh, the analytics will a lot of times have to be there, either the machine or the human. And it's going to be really interesting to see where those two play It's interesting, off. Cisco has a core comp. I mean, I'm a big fan of Cisco, obviously watching you guys build up, and you said you were at Sun, so all the early computer industry uh, pioneers, of all of them right now, Cisco, and even Oracle's out there, at least on the database side, so they're going to be, oh, database, of course, that's, I disagree with that statement, yeah. all database. But you guys have always been wire speed. Packets had to fly around yeah. the network. Yeah. And then the edge of the network was just a branch office to Cisco. <laughs> this is years ago. Yeah. That now extends out to the wearables, the watch, the computers, wearable computers. The car, the bike. The car, everything, right? Yeah. So, well, is that? Somebody said last year, was the car is the biggest wearable there is? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then you got networking so, inside the car. Yeah, you have a subnet inside yeah. the car, so that changes the game. What is going on at Cisco? Share some color, anecdotally. You don't have to be specific and reveal any secrets, but is, does Cisco look at that edge? Do they talk internally like they've moved up the stack. Has Cisco thought, "Hey, we're moving up the stack"? Yeah. Well, Cisco believes in, in, in connection at the edge. Cisco actually leads the IoT. You know, we have the IoT World Forum. We're a big part of the steering committee and driving from that. Moving up the stack, I mean, that's kind of, that means so many different things to so many different people. It I mean, means it's like, a lot to networking guys. <laughs> like, what, moving up the stack? Yeah, layer four, so, no way. Yeah, so that- but Everything's app application centric Everything now. is application centric. You have to make your network in support of the business requirements of the application instead of the technical requirements of the network. And that, that's a big difference, because that means you're going to policy. Once you go to policy, you're being able to change these on the fly. Yeah. So my question then is, you talked earlier about how the world used to be just sort of box-centric, and yep. now it's sort of focused on the applications. Um, at the edge in particular, how are customers sort of moving? I mean, clearly they got to move in that direction, but where are they today? It seems like many customers are still sort of, they can't get out of that old model. Where should they be investing, and how do they get them where they are today to, with well, this vision. I mean, you, you can't get out of the old model if a large part of your business is dependent and running on it. But, I mean, look, everyone's talking about there's the two modes of IT, more and more, are we bimodal or not, and all that. The truth yeah, is- Yeah, but that creates two more stovepipes. I mean, that's well, that's the, exactly right? what's so going that's on. How do you do that without creating two stovepipes? Yeah, right. How do you do that without, with having an infrastructure that supports both? Because, I tell you, I mean, there's a lot of talk about, you know, I'm going to spin up this appliance and that appliance and it's going to solve it. It reminds me of the early days of the app server when you can actually, you could take the reference architecture of the app server or you could actually take this one that had these little hooks that made you, you know, you could get home faster on the weekend because I could actually call upon them and boom, everything was done. Fast forward three years later when you wanted to try to migrate off that, you couldn't. So I think really the biggest challenge is with yeah. people when they're trying to solve these two worlds of the newer types of applications, the distributed types of applications, and maintain their ERP, that they don't end up with two completely different systems. So there's a false summit there. They get enamored by the short-term gains, yeah. but foreclose their future yeah. scale. Yeah. That's essentially what you're saying. Exactly. And the pain of doing that is significant. The, the pain is you hmm. can innovate. What are some of the consequences of that? Just give a random example. You're locking all your budget down for years to come. You won't be able to innovate when something new comes. And look, we've just talked about in the last couple of years, we went from MapReduce to Spark changing the big data space, the analytics is becoming more important. If my budget is locked down because I made decisions that won't let me yeah. do that, if I have to actually keep people around on my payroll because they're the guy that knows how to manage that, whether it's an old Unix machine or, or that new appliance model that I went with that doesn't really work. Those are the kind of things. I think there is more to open standards and, and doing that base, which is kind of interesting. People say, open standard, Cisco, UCS, is it a, it's, it's not commodity hardware. It's the most commodity hardware there is. It, it uses Intel, it uses the standard memory. The thing we do I different- I think that argument's pretty much over now. I yeah. think you guys have put the naysayers. Wait, 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 yeah. Yeah. finish that thought. The thing you do different is- We do, is software. Yeah. yeah. So it's a software defined server, it always has been. We, we create service profiles, which allow you to actually put the personality of the server in software. I, I would say it's the SIM card, like mm -hmm. the SIM card is to the cell phone. Mm -hmm. That's what our service profiles are. Jim, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Great to see you again. I want to give you the final word as, uh, as the quote, guest analyst on this segment here. What's going to happen at the end of this week? Okay, what are we going to, customers going to look at us and say, right now, forecast out, what's going to be the outcome of this week? Of well, this hopefully Stratus everybody's Hadoop saying there was that amazing keynote that took place at about 8.45 <laughs> Wednesday minutes. morning. It was far too short. <laughs> they should have given the guy more time. This is Besides the crowd chat, we're going to do at 11. <laughs> at the crowd chat, we're going to do at one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I think people are going to, it's going to be that 
just that. There's going to be much more demand for the integration of, of the different providers, the different solutions. I think it's going to go um, to much more rapid succession. I think we're going to see people talking about how they're going to bring that data in from the edge, get that insight. Um, I'm looking forward to the world where we, we have, I don't know if it's the right word is a dashboard, but it is a dashboard that lets me know that data that doesn't belong in a database because we're getting the decision so quick, I can see that at the same time I can see my deep analysis and insights I'm getting from a Hadoop plus analytics provider. The world is changing. Some data will never hit the database, says Jim McHugh. That's a true statement that we see that as fact happening. You're watching theCUBE. And if you want to see more of what's going on with Cisco, Cisco has organized a crowd chat with um, just everybody. It's not a Cisco related crowd chat. It's a bunch of cool people talking about Strata and Hadoop. Go to crowdchat.net slash Strata Hadoop or just go to the hashtag Strata Hadoop and join the conversation. Be a thought leader, be part of the conversation. More after this short break here, live in New York City with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.